All right, guys, I'm gonna do a little something different today. It's Saturday, I don't have to work. Um, it, we had a bad rain come in yesterday and all the water's all muddy and everything and torn up, it's cold front came through. So I'm not gonna go take the kayak out today. Fishing, I got no turkeys on my property this year, so no turkey hunting. So today I'm gonna show you how I prepare my antlers. So here's the, uh, the antlers from the buck I shot this past year, nine point. This was the biggest one on my property this year. I found him through my cutback cameras. And I didn't even know this guy was on here. He only showed on one camera. He started showing consistently. I actually was trying to get a film, a film on a shot this guy and he happened to cruise for some does. And I just, I, he came across the property so fast. I didn't have time to get the camera up and on him. And so uh, I'll show you a couple clips when I found them, but. All right, I'm down here now. Tried it again last night. The buck come out like six yards in front of me. Those came in like six, seven yards on this side. They converged right there in front of me, but it was just a four point. He ran them around a little bit. I couldn't get that on film. They were just all of a sudden there on me. And I'm on the ground, so I'm in a good thicket, but I still can't move a whole lot. It's been raining the whole week. We had like five inches in the rain gauge and the creek which is down in front of me there is flooded up to the top of its banks so i don't know how that might impede deer movement tonight so because the water is normally just a few inches deep and now it's a couple feet so we'll see what happens tonight the big guy he just showed up i'm shaking so hard he just came across the opening here i had no time to grab the camera he was right here and he was moving steady. I'm shaking so bad. I'm shaking so bad. He stepped out right in front of me. I just went Rant, to stop him. I put it on his shoulder, pulled the trigger. He took off running. I thought it would drop, but he took off running. I'm shaking so bad. I gotta calm down for look for the look for the blood trail. Oh my goodness. I'm just shaking so bad. He's a dandy. He's a, he's a nice one, I believe. I think he's the one that's been coming in tonight. I gotta I gotta calm down though. I gotta calm down. This is how you do it on Boone Down South. Yeah, let me calm down before I even think about getting up here. Whew. Let's see if we got any blood up here. I got some blood right there. I got some blood. Alright, he's hit. There's some more blood. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This 30 out 6 ballistic sewer tip. I think we got him. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, boy. Would you look at that? Would you look at that? Hang on a minute. Yeah. Woo! <laughs> All right. Well, I was tracking it. Woo! Here, hold on. Here, turn it on. Film you for a minute. Ah, I've been hunting hard, guys. Been hunting hard. And, uh... Man, I tell you what, obviously it's does, button bucks, that's it. 
I did my video on my uh, video on my uh, cameras a couple weeks ago or a week or so ago, and all of a sudden I had this nice buck coming in. All right, guys, this deer, South Carolina. This is one that this this is the first deer that I have actually killed by using the cameras to figure out where he was coming and patterning this guy where he was coming in. Usually I use the cameras just to kind of inventory what deer are out here running around, but this deer kept showing up on the camera. He happened to come in. I was fortunate, thank you Lord, for letting him come in while it was still light. And he cut across right in front of me, and I mean, he was moving. He was looking for does. And I'm gonna tell you, he stinks. His uh, tarsals are just, whoo, they are strong. He's a nine point, so uh, I'll take it. This one's kind of cool. This one here's almost like an airhead. It's palmated, like it's been busted off to one side, but I'm happy, very happy. I haven't shot a buck on this property in three years, so uh, nine point, I'm okay with that. Thank you, Lord. But you know, when you when you get these antlers like this, you got the skull cap, and you've got your, uh, you know, the skin, and so this is what we need to take off. And it's been getting in the way of me working out here. It's been hanging on my bow flex, and I got to keep moving it and hit my punching bag. And I think I'm gonna put my eyes out with this thing. So I'm just gonna go ahead and get this cleaned up today and show you how we get the skin off. And this is just what I do, and it works for me. But so basically, I've got an old uh, turkey fryer. We're gonna use this. I got a tall pot for turkeys. If you have a smaller pot, it would be really easy. Basically, we're gonna boil these these antlers, but it is windy as can be out here. It's like really cold and windy for some reason. I had to put this table up for a windscreen, but it lit, so let me get the pot filled up and show what it looks like. All right, so I got my pot here, and I didn't. I filled. I went ahead and filled up with hot water, just so it'll get get the boiling quicker. And then I'm gonna go ahead and get another pitcher and bring the rest of the water here to fill it on up to cover the antlers. We're going to get this lit up. Yeah, we got flamage. All right, I'm just gonna set the antlers in there. You can see I don't have enough water in here yet. Just, just grab more hot water. But basically, we're gonna fill this up so that the water is over the, the uh, skull cap there. It doesn't matter if the part of the antlers are in the boiling water, it's not gonna affect them. I've done this a bunch. I'm gonna fill this up oh, so the water's over the skull cap and let it sit for about three hours or so, three and a half hours is what I found to make it uh, work real well. Once it's boiled enough, the skin just pretty much comes right off. I just use a pair of pliers and, and maybe a razor blade if I need it, and it just, most of it just comes right off. So it's like a five minute process to get the rest of the uh, skin and the dried up meat. It's obviously been sitting a little while. All right, I'm bringing the last pitcher of water over here. I've already got it. Uh, you see the water's already covering the skull cap. I'm gonna put a little bit more in. Take it pretty close to the edge. And you're gonna to wanna to hang on to that pitcher. So what's gonna happen is that starts uh, boiling, you know, you're gonna lose a lot of water evaporation. So you need to check this every little bit of time, you know, maybe a half hour or so, just check it, add a little more water as necessary, just to keep that skin cap covered up. What happens basically, if you're like me, you know, after I kill a deer, basically my thoughts at that point on, you know, what do I need to do to get the meat taken care of and preserve it and make sure the meat's good and intact. You know, we, we just cut the antlers off and just kind of set them aside for a while. And, by the time we get that, the deer meat taken care of, you know, I'm just too tired to do it, do anything with the antlers. Maybe the skin will come off sooner, but usually my antlers have sat for a while before I get to them. So at that point, really hard to get the skin off. So boiling them is the key here. And again, we're gonna let this go about three and a half hours. We're gonna keep filling up the water as it evaporates out. And this is gonna start boiling in a little bit. I don't know if you can see, but there are some bubbles starting to come up there. So we're about to get to a boiling point here. It's been about 20 minutes. That's a big tank of water, even with hot water. That's why it's just doing hot water. It takes a while for it to get heated up. And I do have my, my flame set to full on this thing. You, you could do this in the house with just a regular uh, you know, cooking pot. But if you've ever done anything with bones, if you're trying to make bone broth or anything, bones kind of just give off a certain smell. And I mean, it's not horrible, but I don't care for it. You could get in trouble with your wife if you try to do this in the house. So just say it. All right, so basically it's been a couple hours. Never really got it to a full boil here because it's had rain, it's been cold, it's been windy. But if you look up close here, you kind of see how the skin has already started to kind of peel back from the skull cap there. And so at this point, I'm gonna see how, how it's gonna work. I've just got pretty much what I use is just a razor blade and a pair of needle nose. And if all this goes well, we should start to see it come off pretty quick. So. It is, it is hot in here, so let's be 
careful what you're holding on to. But I'll grab some of this and see how loose this is. Let's see here. Yeah, I see the good portions of it will start to come off here. Probably need some bigger pliers here to pull it off. But yeah, you see it's starting to get loose here. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna need some bigger pliers to grab hold. So you can see it's all starting to, I can get a piece of it and pull it off here, but it's just breaking into my uh, pliers here. It starts coming off in chunks like this. Sometimes if I, if I had it to a boil, it would come off a lot faster and just almost peel from the bone directly. Almost like when you're cooking uh, chicken wings just right on a big green egg and they start peeling off the bone just right. There we go. But basically that boiling is what makes this uh, easier to come off. So basically I just work this stuff off. Sometimes you get 90% of it off right after you pull it out of the water like this. And you just gotta work it off here. It could probably use a little bit more boiling. So it's starting to rain. So I think I'm gonna throw it in the water a little bit longer. Loosen up just a little bit more before I continue on with pulling this off just to make it easier. All right, I let it go a little bit longer. See how clean that's coming there. What I'm gonna do is I've uh, got a bigger set of parts to grip this off with. Let me open this bag up here. A little windy. Normally, it takes doesn't take as much time. I usually have this boiling, but I guess it's usually summertime when I'm doing it. Right now, it's springtime, but it's a really cold day. With it's been raining too, so I've been getting rainwater falling here, falling here as well. So we're gonna see if I can get some bigger chunks of this off here now. And you basically just gotta put this in there and work it off. And just take chunks at a time and they should come right off. Like I say, sometimes the whole thing comes right off, but I don't think it's, I got the really the water good enough, hot enough um, to get it done. So what I'm gonna do is work this stuff off and basically, you know, what I'll do sometimes around the base of the antlers, I gotta use the blade and use the razor blade to kind of get some of that loose right up against the, the base there. But I'm gonna go ahead and work the rest of this off, get this cleaned up, and there might be a little bit of residue left over, and I'll put it in the pot for a little bit longer just to get the, the remaining little piece of residue uh, worked on, and then uh, we'll be good to go. All right, here she is after I worked it all off. It's all cleaned up pretty good. Once you get it down to this layer, what I do is I take an old grill brush and just you know run the grill brush over it really good. You can see it's all cleaned up pretty good. And a lot of times what I'll do is I'll take a little bit of a mixture of bleach water, just kind of brush it down with that, and then let it dry in the sun. But we've got no sun today, so I'm probably just gonna hang this back in my barn to dry so animals don't take it away. And then once it dries, uh, I will put it where it needs to go. All right, I hung it up to dry last night in the workshop, and you kind of see that it came pretty clean. You kind of see around the base of that little yellow stuff. That's a little more cinnamon type stuff that I'm going to have to uh, work off there. Because you just want to have it completely clean. You don't want to have any kind of fleshy material on it so you don't, you know, attract bugs or stink or anything like that. So, but overall, you can kind of see it's it's cleaned up pretty good. I'm going to clean that up. The stuff underneath underneath the base of the antler, you can kind of see what's going on there. And then, but other than that, um, it's pretty uh, flesh free. And at that point, you can put it in the house, do whatever you want with it. All right, this thing is ready to go. It's all cleaned up. At this point, you can put it on a plaque if you want. One last thing I usually do with all my antlers is I go ahead and write the date I killed it inside the skull. And that was 11, 15, 18, and I killed it in South Carolina on my property. And I just make a note of that, but I generally don't forget. But I don't put these in plaques. I'm just gonna add it here to my collection up here. Set it inside there like such and we're good. So that's how I do it And that's the bobcat. I finally got back from the taxidermy that I got a year and a half ago So I think it turned out pretty cool. But anyway, hope you guys enjoyed it got something out of it. Catch you next time Don't forget to subscribe if you like what you see. Thank you Bye -bye.